to the election campaign trail and the Prime Minister is due to travel to the southeast of England today as he's pledging to amend the Equality Act to protect women's spaces and make clear sex means biological sex. Sir Keir Starmer is expected to make a big announcement on security, reaffirming Labour's commitment to a nuclear deterrent triple lock and aim to increase defence spending to 2.5% of GDP. So here to debate all the stories of the day, we have the Labour advisor Stella Chadakidu and the former Conservative special advisor Fred de Fossard in the studio. Um, let's start with you, uh, Stella, because we had problems with your mic last hour, so I want to give you a good run this time. Um, but just give us a little sense of why Sir Keir Starmer, who wants to be no drama Starmer, has decided to go for defence, which is traditionally a wobbly area for the Labour leader. Exactly for the reason you just said. He wants to show that the Labour Party is no longer the party for protest. We are now the party for national security. And he will be saying, look, the Conservatives, this may have been a policy that is important for them, but the reality is they have failed to increase military spending, if anything they have But depressed. their pledge is actually more concrete than what even he'll be announcing today. I mean, just weeks ago, the Defence Secretary and Rishi Sunak stood shoulder to shoulder saying, we will commit to 2.5% of GDP, whereas Keir Starmer today is saying, when economic conditions allow. Well, and when the, will Labour that Party, the Labour Party will do the same. They, today they are committing to 2.5%, but I think more important is what they're trying to show with the culture shift in the Labour Party. So alongside that, alongside the policy, he's also uh, revealing 14 new Labour Party candidates who have a military background and there you will find Royal Marine captains and people who have made a career out of the military. And what he's trying to show is, look, policies are all good and we all have, as you said, very similar policies, but at the same time, the kind of person who, for whom national security is important is choosing to stand as a Labour candidate and vote for the Labour Party. Mm. Mm. And will this be a worry, do you think, Fred, then, for the Conservatives? This is sort of parking their tanks on, on Tory territory. I think Stella makes a very fair point about culture shift. I would definitely agree with that. To an extent, yes, it's parking tanks on Conservative uh, territory. It's continuity in terms of policy, that's for sure. I mean, the, the Vanguard submarines are going to continue. But I think there's an opportunity for the Conservatives uh, and people who are sceptical of Labour to dig into the details of what they're proposing. Um, where is the money for their increased uh, defence spending, especially when uh, Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, wants to bind uh, the government and therefore Parliament's own hand uh, to the will of the OBR even more than it is right now? Uh, where does this stand with the Labour Party's potential commitment to try and rejoin or uh, uh, bring Britain into some EU defence uh, cooperation? Operation Pact, which would significantly reduce Britain's leeway to, um, uh, to deploy armed forces around the world in British interests. It would subordinate Britain's defence uh, to the interests of France and Germany. I don't think that's anything that British voters want. I think there's an opportunity to raise the stakes of this debate, um, make it more prominent. It'd be really interesting if we could see Lord Cameron and maybe David Lammy go head to head, sort of show uh, their competing visions for Britain and the world and national Fred, security. Head to head on what? Because there's there's no new initiatives, there's no new policy mm. because there's no money. That's true. I mean, that's a, that's a sort of inescapable fact. Uh, each party is trying to claim there's a, there's new money to spend here, but they are they still do have fundamentally different priorities. Labour are talking about a closer relationship with the European Union. That has implications for defence policy, as this EU defence mm. harmonisation idea suggests. That is not in Britain's interest, and wavering voters would not like that policy What you're either. looking for is a bit of theatre attached to things. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, uh, everyone's been saying this is a boring election campaign. So far, the most theatre has been provided by Nigel Farage, and he isn't even standing for a seat. That's interesting. What about this um, Brexit talk that we're hearing? It's on the front of uh, the eye this morning that the Labour's plans for a softer Brexit is actually far too ambitious, according to the EU. And actually, if they get what they're talking about, it's actually what a lot of Brexiteers wanted, which is independence from the European Union, but no friction on trade. Well, well, good luck with that. Yes, well, we will see what happens with that, because I think people are underestimating how much difference a changing of the guards can make when it comes to government. Because a big failure with the EU was that you had the changing leadership, you had foreign secretaries, EU secretaries changing all the time, and then you had a very bad relationship with EU leaders. Mm -hmm. You had politicians mm -hmm. trying to brief the media and trying to show something to their voters because they were worried about the elections, and they were worried about the Conservative Party has been so worried about uh, um, managing the party, basically, and keeping everyone happy. That was incredibly difficult. Whereas 
Keir Starmer is likely going to have a very big majority. He's going to have a much, much better time. But one thing is for sure, he's made it perfectly clear he will be decreasing immigration. There is no backpedaling on, pe- on Brexit. The Labour Party has heard the message loud and clear. Mm-hmm. I tell you what's not loud and clear, uh, Fred. Uh, Rupert Murdoch, right. So <laughs> he's, off, he's getting married. But, you know, in every previous election... Uh, going back 40 years or so. He's been there at the centre of all this, talking to one party or the other, saying, I'm the man that you want, play ball with me, things will be good for you. Why is he not involved anymore? That's a great question. I mean, for one, I wouldn't... Um, let's, let's not overstate the impact of uh, a media baron on a general election. The uh, uh, British, democracy is pre- pretty, British democracy is pretty robust, uh, and I don't believe that whole, like, 1992, it was the Sun what won it thing. It was uh, the public not trusting Neil Kinnock, definitely not, uh, definitely not Rupert Murdoch and the Sun. Um, but I can also see there's a... Like many people, there's a sort of uh, long-term disillusionment with the Conservatives, but that's not met on the other side with instinctive trust in the Labour Party's agenda. And also, remember, um, Keir Starmer's history with Leveson, prosecutions of journalists when he was uh, director of public prosecutions. There might be a fair bit of, um, like, a trust deficit that, uh, that, uh, that, he ne- that he needs to build up. It might be difficult. Is there a trust deficit for women and the Labour Party? Do they have a women's <laughs> problem? And this is what Kemi Badnut will be trying to persuade us all today that they do. I think they no longer do because Keir Starmer has come out and said, look, a woman is, is, is a woman. And yes, but five has... minutes ago, he had a problem with that. So, you know, flip-flop sure, Starmer has not it is, covered himself in glory it, 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 when it comes to women. It is a political minefield. I'm not going to deny that. And I, 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 I did not enjoy seeing Labour Party politicians or politicians of any stripe trying, trying to do the twa- tongue twisters and come <clears> to an actual policy. But I think with this one, Kemi Badenoch here, she's just trying to steer, to, to get more attention on a policy issue that the Conservatives believe um, uh, we will get them attention from their core voting group, when in fact I don't think that there is a policy need for, a, for an actual change. The Equalities of Human Rights Council has said there is no actual need for a new law, because if it is proportionate and if there is a legitimate aim, um, all of these services that Kemi Badenoch is referencing, like rape crisis centres, for example, they can, they can bar trans women if they feel that there is a legitimate issue mm. there. Uh, for example, if a rape victim says that they are not comfortable or, or in a similar situation. Fred, so I think this when, is all just red meat. Mm. When, you, when you, you were talking about the, the difference in the polls and it's a 21-point lead or so for, mm. for Labour... Could you honestly see any way that that could be turned around? There's a thin and narrow path, but there's not very much time left. Um, I don't think it is through a big, comprehensive series of policy blitzes. I think the party that does policy blitzes is always the party kind of on the back foot, uh, seeking attention. Uh, The way to do that is to do a much more precise campaign of sowing doubt and disillusionment with Starmer and particularly Rachel Reeves. Why they want to um, uh, cap uh, ISA savings accounts, why they want to to increase taxes on pension contributions, but not for people in the NHS. So it's an interesting message they want to send to um, uh, middle and higher earners in the private sector Mm -hmm. that we will tax you to pay for the public Mm -hmm. sector. Uh, Those are areas where you can cause a bit of a dividing line, Mm -hmm. but right now we're not seeing that from the Conservative Party. Just a yes and no answer from everybody, and I just really want to know whether or not you trust polls anymore. No. Not especially. I don't either. I think the polls could be completely wrong once again. (laughs) Uh, It remains to be seen. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Stella Chatelkidu and Fred Defossad. Quite interesting names on the panel this morning for us. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed.